My name is Mariana and I'm a community health worker. In this video, we will discuss asthma medications and their importance in controlling asthma. Let's review how air enters our body and travels down the airways. Air enters the body through the nose and mouth and travels down the airways in the lungs until it enters the air sacs. This is where the oxygen in the air enters the bloodstream. In asthma, a trigger causes the airways to become smaller, making it more difficult to breathe. The airway may become smaller due to swelling on the inside of the airway, excess mucus clogging the airway, and or tightening of the muscles that squeeze the airways. Just like there are two main parts to asthma, there are two main groups of asthma medications that help open the airways and keep them open. People with asthma may be prescribed a quick reliever and or long-term controller medication to manage their asthma. We will discuss long-term controller medications first because of their importance in preventing asthma symptoms. A medical provider will prescribe a long-term controller medication if a person's asthma is not controlled with only a quick reliever medication. Long-term controller medications work by reducing the swelling and excess mucus that narrow and clog the airways. By reducing the swelling and excess mucus in the airways, long-term controllers help to prevent asthma symptoms from happening, reduce how often asthma symptoms occur, and reduce the severity of symptoms. Long-term controller medications achieve maximum effect in about four to six weeks and need to be taken daily even when a person is feeling well and not having asthma symptoms. People taking long-term controller medications will not feel them working right away, as they do with quick reliever medications. However, if taken daily, the long-term controller will prevent asthma symptoms from occurring and protect the airways, which can lead to good asthma control. There are three classes of long-term controller medications that can be prescribed to help control asthma. Corticosteroids, also known as steroids, corticosteroid plus a long-acting bronchodilator known as combination medications, and leukotriene modifiers. According to the National Asthma Guidelines, inhaled steroids are the most effective medications for long-term management of persistent asthma and should be used by patients and providers as recommended in the guidelines for control of asthma. Some people have concerns about taking inhaled steroids and will not take their controller medication because they need to be taken daily, they do not understand how steroids work, they are scared of the potential side effects, they don't know how to use the medication correctly, their cultural or religious beliefs raise questions about the use of medications. It's very important to encourage patients to discuss their concerns and fears about asthma medications with their medical provider. This way, they can eliminate myths and get correct information about their asthma medications from a health professional. Steroids can be taken by pill or inhaled and do have possible side effects. When taken in pill form, they are stronger and contain more medicine than the inhaler form. The medicine travels through the bloodstream instead of going into the lungs directly. They can cause weight gain, mood swings, and trouble sleeping and they can raise blood sugar levels. When taken in the inhaled form, they're safer because the medicine is a lower dose than in pill form, the medicine goes directly into the lungs, and inhaled steroids do not cause the same side effects as in the pill form, such as weight gain. It is important to note that steroids used for asthma are not the same steroids taken by athletes to build muscle. Combination medications contain two medications, a steroid to reduce the swelling and a long-acting bronchodilator or LABA. The LABA keeps the muscles from tightening around the airways for up to 12 hours. Leukotriene modifiers such as Singular block the cells in the body that cause inflammation. They reduce swelling and mucus buildup in the airways. The second group of asthma medications are quick relievers or rescue medications, 
also known as bronchodilators, or short-acting beta-2 agonists, or SABA. Quick reliever medications are used to treat asthma symptoms. They relax the muscles that tighten around the airways. They relieve the squeeze. You should feel relief from symptoms within minutes. They work fast, but only last for a short period of time, about four to six hours. Quick relievers do not address the swelling or excess mucus. Side effects from quick relievers sometimes include a fast heartbeat, feeling shaky, and or feeling anxious. These side effects usually go away within 15 to 30 minutes. It's also important to balance the risk of possible medication side effects with the risk of uncontrolled asthma. Uncontrolled asthma increases the risk of negative consequences, including nighttime asthma symptoms that cause loss of sleep, sitting in a crowded emergency room, not playing sports and musical instruments, poor quality of life, depression, bullying. Other risks include missing school or work, loss of job or decreased benefit from education, increase in health care expenses, increase in asthma symptoms, permanent lung damage, hospitalization, and even death. People have a higher risk of death from asthma if they have an ICU admission, intubation from a severe asthma episode, two or more hospitalizations for asthma in the past year, three or more ER visits for asthma in the past year, a hospital or ER visit for asthma in the past month, used more than two quick reliever inhalers each month, difficulty recognizing asthma symptoms, living in low-income communities, additional health issues, and or use illegal drugs. In conclusion, there are many ways to use medications to help control your asthma. As a community health worker, your role is to help individuals understand the difference between the long-term controller and quick reliever medications and how each work to manage asthma symptoms. You also have a unique opportunity to create a safe environment and empower people to talk openly about their concerns about asthma treatment.